obviously a matter of considerable practice. It's not something you're going to acquire in a, in a, a few days or even weeks. But it's a, a wonderful trick if you just read horizontally rather than vertically. I really, really can't say how much difference this makes because if you work vertically, it will take you forever to work out all the different transpositions. And um, if you can just uh, work horizontally, look at this for example. Here's. Well, I've just played the first violin part, but I've got much more idea musically of how the piece is going to sound than I would have ever have done by just working out that note and that note and that, okay? So do please, as I say, work horizontally and then, well, with the two hands, you can just take two parts. Now, if we have the first and second violins in more or less the same register, it's a good idea just to transpose one an octave higher. cello and viola part. Now, the viola clef takes some practice with just reading, so there's nothing wrong with it, just doing this sort of thing. If you're not secure. And then obviously the cello is playing more or less the same notes, so we can play the cello an octave lower. And if I'm not sure, I just go slower. of music rather than just an agonizing exercise. Now this will obviously be more complex if we're dealing with transpositions, but here we have horns in F. I'm written a G in octaves. Well, that's a fairly typical horn line, there's nothing particularly difficult with that. So I can very easily transpose that, transpose that down a fifth. And then the rest. Okay, so I can put that now with anything else. I don't have to complete everything that's going on just at the moment. So why don't I combine that with the oboes. Okay, and then we go to the next entry. Whoops, I'm transposing oboes, which is never a good idea. Okay, so and that's that little passage already beginning to form and to sound like music in my ear, although I'm still only playing two instruments at a time. When I come to pull, put all this together, I can find the melody line, I can find the bass line, well, obviously, as you know, this is a two-part invention, so musically it's not going to sound bad if I only stick to that. But you'd be surprised, even Beethoven symphonies sound a lot more like music played as a two-part invention than they do with somebody playing one chord per hour, um, trying to read all the notes vertically. When you come to composing or arranging for a full orchestra, before you try and set everything out on this enormous stave, it's really rather frightening to be confronted with all these empty lines of music that have to be filled up. I can really recommend working with uh, a partitelle, which is just a sort of a reduced score. And this is um, Debussy's sketch that he did for piano of the, his famous prelude. Yeah? Now, obviously, the first line is only one note and one line anyway. So it doesn't really make sense no skin there. Puff our noses to leave that as it goes. In this bar four, again we see the flute part, we see the string parts which are entering here, and then underneath that there's the horn written. There. And I can add that then to the other strings in the next bar. The harp 
Well, I'm sure Debussy must have enjoyed playing this on the piano. It's no accident that it goes up to the top G sharp. Look, this fits the two hands perfectly. Okay, this little figure, and as I say, resolving onto a, a B flat seven chord. And the same repeats. And then if we look at the next line, well now we have D major with the this chord up above. And now if I want to play this on the piano, well I may have to leave some things out, but then more transparent than if you try and do the whole score at the first at the first working that's all for now